Okay, my first challenge is figuring out how I'm gonna build the fascia above these cabinets between the top of the cabinet and the ceiling. I've got a, I believe it's a six inch piece of board. It's just a slab that's painted to match the cabinets. And that'll get us up pretty close. So we've got to fill seven and a half inches, well, seven and three quarter inches. So I've got a six inch piece and that'll take us up to within an inch and a half ish. And then from there I'll crown the top of that to the ceiling. I have to go dig out all of the pieces of slab board, find it in my boxes over here and figure out how I'm gonna do this. Typically, I would put a piece of furring strip up here, like a one by two, and just go along the, the, uh, the line here and then attach that slab to that if it were the full height. But because I don't have a full height piece, I have to figure out a way to attach it directly to the cabinet face frame. And uh, so that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna start by building and boxing in this uh, valance thing and then work off of that. I've got 40 linear feet of slab filler, they call it, which is basically just one by six solid maple hardwood painted to match the cabinets. I've got a three inch fascia board I've got a 11 and 3 quarter inch, basically piece of soffit. It's a 3 quarter inch piece of plywood that's painted. I had to rip off an eighth of an inch to get it to fit. Uh, so I'll put that nailing strip on, then I'm going to put the fascia piece on. So I'll have basically a Z. And then I'll get that in there and put together, and then I can go ahead and start with the slab filler and go along the top of everything. I think that's a good plan. I'm using the laser to hit my marks on the floor for where my studs were so that I can mark them up there. I tried using like a straight edge and a level and it ends up always being off, like up to a half an inch. Laser, dead nuts. Here's the thing about Craig jigs. They're so fun to use, you tend to go through a buttload of screws just because it's fun to do. But whatever. Anyway, I used a bunch of scrap blocks that I had, some rips from trim that was left over from doing the ceiling, all three quarter inch material. And now I got little nailers. My marks every eight inches for the ICF studs on the wall. I'm gonna line these up, zip those into the wall. Uh, but first I'm going to drill the hole for the can light, the LED wafer that will be above the sink. Let's see if we can drill a six and a quarter inch hole. Not breaking something. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. That's a good hole saw. Here's an interesting tidbit. Those Rockler corner clamps are the exact height as the Craig jig, so all this sets up nice. Got little feet, little work surface. I'm gonna put uh, about six pocket holes here, and that's going to be for the filler slab at the top. Tacking some nailers onto the back. 
little blocks and those blocks fit down in behind the face frame of the cabinet. So far it's working. I'll show you what it looks like inside. That's how she goes together. So far it hasn't been too bad, but <laughs> now you can see all in above the cabinets. There's a lot of room in there. I should make a little hiding spot. All right, now we'll do the little fascia board. It kind of goes right there in front of that light hole. It's a, just a little three inch strip and I'm gonna set it back about an inch and a half just to do a little bit of a reveal and kind of give it some detail look. You gotta get a little creative with your use of clamps when you're doing this. I got a little levered piece of scrap clamped kind of clamp it up there, pushes down on the slab until my glue dries. So I'm not gonna do this piece, I think I said, until we get the countertop in and we can lower this down to the countertop, which will then flush up the tops. Then I'll put that top slab up. So that'll be the very last thing we do, but I can still kind of glaze all the rest and get that done. Got this little piece to finish. I, I didn't notice this until just now, or yesterday actually, got this appliance cabinet in and it's locked in by these other two cabinets and it's like I said just temporarily fastened here but it's not going to come back out unless you take the whole system out and this is supposed to have flushed ends uh, finished ends on the right and the left side and I got to look and I was like that's wrong uh, so what do we do how do we fix this well I got with cabinet joint and they noted on the plans that yes, this was supposed to have finished ends, but uh, somehow it didn't get entered into the system that way. So what we can do, and what we're going to do, is this is a quarter inch overhang, the face frame overhangs here, so we're gonna use a quarter inch piece of finished plywood and just apply it. Uh, once we're all done, countertops in, we set this down, fasten it in, then I can just do an applied panel there, just like I would with a false door. So that'll clean that up and make it the way it's supposed to be and solve the problem. You don't have to yank the cabinet. You don't have to try and match paint with kind of crappy store-bought paint versus this, which is a high-end industrial finish. So that's gonna solve that problem. Cabinet joint came through, no problems. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this up and then move on to the glaze part, I think. Everything seems like it's going too well. It generally is. I just screwed up majorly. I thought this was a little weird, putting this slab filler on top flush with the cabinet tops. And I really didn't like the way it was looking, like that shadow line it's throwing. It just didn't seem to look right, but I didn't really understand what I was doing. And then I looked at the rendering and the plan, I totally did it wrong. So I just went through uh, 40 linear feet of this very expensive slab filler trim, and I put it on top of the face frame. It's actually supposed to go on the face frame front, creating a sort of cover so that when the door is installed, the reveals are equal around it. That's why this top rail is a little bit extended. So then you're supposed to put the crown on that slab, which that slab is supposed to be on the face frame. It's a little too late now since that's already screwed and glued on there. It is not coming off without wrecking cabinets. And that's a little over $600 worth of freaking hard maple wood. And it doesn't look right. I mocked up a door. It just doesn't look right. So I'm kind of trying to figure out what I'm gonna do here. 
I don't want to redo the whole thing. I think what I can do, and this is what I'm going to try, is try to find a piece of trim that works, that looks good, that will overlay that whole line and put it to where it lines up correctly with the, so that the reveals around the doors look good. It'll cover that line. Then I can crown on the slab and it'll make it look like a pretty complex, uh, elaborate piece of crown. That's the only thing I can do. I'm really mad at myself for not looking at the drawing and just, you know, going, trying to get stuff done as fast as I could. But that's what you ha that's what happens when you're building custom stuff. Sometimes you make mistakes. Just got to figure them out and move on. So I've cut some one by four pieces of new slab filler to go over the original slab filler to create a sort of a wrap around and hide that seam between the door, well, between the top slab filler and the cabinet. So I'm going to trim that little seam with a wraparound piece, and I made a little jig right there to hold it exactly where it needs to be, one half inch above where the doors will fall to get a consistent half inch reveal between the doors and the, between the doors and this new slab piece. So I'm going to assemble this and see what it looks like. using a little bit of Valspar antiquing glaze in mousse color to try and figure out whether we want to glaze these or not. This is the stock frosty white. Here's a little test piece I made with this glaze. Might be a little too grayish, a little too off white, but here's the, a similar test uh, chip color sample of the wooden cabinets for the island. So those would be the color coordination there. This is a little too stark white, and we knew it was going to be. We intended to glaze this. Just don't know if that's the color or not. I mean, it looks good to me. Uh, I don't want it to be too yellow or too green, and that's got a little bit of uh, a greenish gray in it. But I could, I could live with it. I don't think it's terrible. Um, I don't know, I'll just wait for the boss and see what she says. Here's the piece that we got from cabinet joint that is a glaze. This is a hard maple wood with a frosty white color tone, which is what ours is. And then this has a coffee glaze with a 15% sheen top coat. And that's kind of what I'm going for. Here's my test piece. This already had a, a little bit of a glaze on it, so I kind of went over it with an antiquing glaze that is uh, mousse colored. And that's as close as I can get. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with that and start glazing all the frames and basically everything you see here. And then I'm gonna start doing the doors inside and out. And that's gonna take me a few days. Well, change of plans. Um, try to put glaze on here, did these seams, and I don't like the way it looks. Jamie doesn't like the way it looks. It's getting into the seams that I just caulked and made to where everything looks seamless. And I don't know, it just makes it look dingy and not, uh, not good. So neither of us like it. I'm gonna try to take this back off where I did a little bit just as a test. Good thing is it's water-based, so I think I can get most of it off and then, uh, we're just going to leave it white and let it naturally glaze over time. So saves me a bunch of time. I don't have to freaking glaze 34 doors and drawer fronts. So I'm going to clean this up and actually just, I guess, 
start putting on doors. This is kind of what I was going for when I created a sample and did a test, a glaze test. See how it's nice and evenly covered, even though this is pretty dirty from being beaten around. But the white part is evenly coated and the accent lines are nice. Kind of that's what I was going for. Unfortunately, the antiquing glaze I used turned out like real dingy. It looks antique and that's what it's supposed to do, but I don't like the way it looks. It makes everything look kind of dirty. And I don't want to do the whole kitchen in a really dirty, dingy looking glaze. So I had Jamie come up and look at it and she agreed. It's just not the look we're going for. We don't want it to look like a big, filthy, dirty kitchen. So we're gonna keep it frosty white for now, finish it all out, finish the entire kitchen, all the fixtures and everything, and then decide if we really can't, if we really don't like it being pure white, then we'll address it, possibly take the doors and door fronts and have them professionally done or something, I don't know. I don't think it's gonna be a problem because we have, we're using such a cool door profile with really t articulate details in them. It's called a presidential raised panel. That there, it throws enough shadow lines, it makes it look you know, pretty, pretty nice. I don't think it necessarily needs the glaze. And that's kind of good because it'll save me like three or four days of really detail-oriented stuff that I don't feel like doing. So I went to Lowe's and I picked up a quart of cabinet and furniture paint that is the frosty white. So I'm gonna paint all the trim I just put up to match everything. Uh, the other good thing about this being painted cabinets, I don't like seams between cabinets and the wall. Fortunately, our walls are really plumb, but I don't care how perfect your walls are. If they're made of wood studs, you're gonna have a little bit of wave and the cabinets are perfectly plumb and square, so when you put that up against the wall, you're gonna have a little gap. That's one reason they give you an extended style so you can scribe it and hand plane it to match the wall if necessary, but with painted cabinets, I don't need to do that. I'm just gonna caulk the uh, gap, paint the wall up to it, and they fit perfectly seamless to the wall and to each other. And now that I have the frosty white paint, I can touch up any places that necessarily need it, and it all looks like one built-in unit. Um, so that's turning out really well. This band that I put up here because of my screw up with the filler slab at the top is turning out pretty good. Uh, I used a paint that I already had that matched the walls. That doesn't match that, but I, I needed to get a couple coats of paint on it anyways to hide the wood grain. Now that I have this paint, I'm gonna go over it with a final coat. It'll match the cabinets perfectly, and it gives a nice uh, shadow line and a place for the doors to sort of close in in a reset. It looks, looks a little recessed or inset in a way. Then there'll be crown along the top. Everything will be really intricate looking, I think. Now I ran into an issue where when I put that piece of trim up here, it sets off of that inset piece behind it and now I have a gap back there. You know, I wasn't planning for all this when I was putting the slab in. It was supposed to be just a, a, a flat fascia front and then we have the little soffit part where the light is back there. So that's kind of a dorky looking little detail. So I went to Lowe's and I picked up a nice piece of about an inch and a half, inch and three quarter crown. And I'm just gonna put that right up in there, fill that gap, paint it, and it's gonna look perfect. So that ended up being a nice little detail that I wasn't planning on, but is gonna make it look even better. Also, the range hood here actually has, this is a panel that comes out so you can work on the blower. I'm not gonna put that in until we actually do get the blower in, cause that's gonna be a, <laughs> a little bit of a challenge. But this also comes with a shelf that comes out here and you had to order the corbels that hold up the shelf separately and they were ridiculously expensive, like somewhere upwards of $300. I went to Lowe's and I grabbed these for 10 bucks each. They're perfectly good little corbel made out of wood. I just sand them up a little bit and paint them the cabinet color and uh, they'll work perfectly. So for a total of about 20 bucks, they match, exact profile, boom, done. All right, let's see if this fits. Might be off by about a 16th. Nope, that's perfect.
So I like the way this crown is turning out so much that I decided to do inside also, and I'm just gonna kinda wrap it in there. And right now I'm just messing around with coping miter joints, which is tedious, but I think it's a better way to do inside corners on crown molding. Just my personal opinion, because no wall is ever perfectly square. No wall ever has a perfect 45. Sweet. That's about as good as I can get it. And thank goodness for caulking, but still. Here are the corbels. They turned out pretty darn good, actually. They'll go right here and hold up, whoop, actually they'll go here and hold up that little shelf. For 20 bucks, you can't beat that. Uh, sure beats the uh, $300, I think it was, that the, the maker of this hood wanted. That was crazy. Little update, um, we did get the end skins, but we can't put those in until we get the countertop in and get this set into place. Uh, my little mistake with the slab filler up here ended up costing me all kinds of time and frustration. So if I had just looked at the plans and done it right the first time, I'd be done with this uh, probably three days ago. Uh, so I ended up, like I said, machining a bunch of one by four, cutting it, mitering it, sanding it, painting it. This probably has eight coats of paint on it because we could not find the right color. Uh, I went to Lowe's and ordered exactly the right Sherwin-Williams paint color, which is frosty white. They mixed it for me and I put two or three coats on and it ended up being like a bluish tint. It did not match at all. So I took a piece of scrap uh, to Lowe's and I showed them and they said, yeah, that doesn't match. So they did the scan of the actual scrap, did, did it two or three times and kind of found the happy medium and they swapped out that quart of paint for me for no charge, so that was great. Then I went back and did two more coats of that, and that is the closest match I've found so far. And I now have a quart of frosty white paint that works way better than the touch-up kit that they give you uh, from Cabinet Joint because that stuff seems to be very thin and like almost translucent. Um, I think it's also more of an, an enamel than like a cabinet paint that you would buy at, at Lowe's. But regardless, we are matched up now. Everything is good. And I can finally start moving on to and getting the drawer hardware, drawer slides, doors, all that, get that done. I'm gonna try and knock that out as much as I can today because I got a phone call this morning. Our rest of our cabinets are on their way and they will be here tomorrow. So. I need to get that back room cleaned out and get all of the doors and drawers that are in there on these cabinets so that I can offload another four skids of cabinets. So there's gonna be a whole crap load of cabinets right here when we make the island. We've got four wall cabinets for the laundry. We've got a cool little custom vanity looking thing for the upstairs that's made up of you know base cabinets and some tall cabinets. Uh, and then we have a regular vanity. It's still custom for this bathroom because we have to build around the air return here and it's gonna be a little bit of customization, but uh, all those things you can do when you do RTA custom cabinets from cabinet joint. Okay, I'm unboxing everything else. This is a ridiculous amount of hardware. Hinge packs different sizes. Here's a pack list, uh, shelf pins, drawer slides. Man, that's nice. 17 and a half by 23 and a quarter. That is, that goes right here. To this cabinet. That is a, that doesn't have anything drilled. So this is an applied panel. Oh, this is the trash pullout door because it doesn't need hinge cups drilled. Um, it's not really a door, it's more of a drawer front. Okay, that makes more sense.
finished unpacking all the doors and drawer fronts and drawer boxes and hardware and got everything counted and accounted for. So we do have everything. And I kind of got it all staged here. I'm really impressed with how well these are made. Man, these doors, some of these are real heavy. That's the uh, applied panel for up at the top of the fridge cabinet. Got the trash pullouts with the trash cans going on. Doors and drawers for days. And the good thing is, got this room cleaned out so we can fill it back up again tomorrow. First thing I'm gonna do is install this trash pullout. Uh, there are a lot of options for trash can pullouts. So for the longest time, fitting two trash cans into an 18 inch wide cabinet, you couldn't do it. You had to go to a 21 inch or you had to go with one larger can and then you ended up with a lot of wasted space inside. Well, they started making this easy to use all in one deal where it's basically dummy proof now. You don't have to install four or five pieces of hardware and then fit a bunch of things. They tried to make it as dummy proof as they, they could. This is a hard maple plywood box. Everything is uh, kind of pre-assembled for you. And it comes with the two cans. These are two, uh, I guess, 30 quart for your trash and your recycling or, you know, whatever. This comes with the glides already mounted. So you put the tall side to the front. These brackets will mount to the door once we're done. First thing we need to do is take this carriage off of the slides. So you got these little thumb thingies here. You gotta squeeze these thumb things and that'll release the carriage. So put this out of the way. Here's the screws I was looking for. Four basically look like inch drywall screws, coarse threaded screws, and you get four shorter stainless screws. Now, it definitely matters which screws you use for which of the following. So you want the black screws that are a little longer to mount the carriage to the floor of the cabinet and you want these screws to mount the door to the front of the carriage. So we're gonna put these off to the side. First, we need to find the center of our opening. Stick this in here. Very sharp pieces, don't scratch anything. Slide that in there and line up your marks and you're perfectly centered. Bring this all the way up uh, to the face frame. Check your clearance. Clearance here, same as clearance there. And drive your four screws down into the floor of the cabinet. They've pre-measured, pre-drilled, pre-assembled. I mean, that is super easy. That typically would take 15, 20 minutes to figure out if you had to do all this, you know, as a separate step. You don't have to put a lot of torque on these screws because all your weight is this way. Not, it's not like it's gonna pull out. That could not have been easier. Now, I'm going to loosen these up a little bit so that we can mount the door to it once we get this set. All right. This is already done. You just put this, put this back on there. Click it, and now you're good. Soft close, full extension. Uh, there we go. I wish this whole build was that simple. All right, now we gotta put the door on here. This is the door 
it's not, you can tell because it's not drilled with the cups for the regular bloom hinges. These inch and a quarter full overlay cabinets uh, call for having the bottom of the door flush with the bottom of the frame. And then basically a half inch reveal along the top. All right, I just took a couple 36 inch squeezy clamps, put a piece of scrap down there, give me a little shelf. Take a look at this door, see if there's any reason to put any particular side up or down. I'm gonna put this side up. All right, so now our bottom is perfect. So this is a little cheat. This is just a scraper, razor blade scraper but that width is exactly a quarter inch. So I use that as my little guide, basically to get me good there. I'm gonna adjust these to where they kind of get right up to the frame, but not touch the, not over, not overlap the frame. Tighten these back up. So that sits about a sixteenth in from the frame and the front of that bracket is perfectly flush with the front of the face frame. So I'll get this side. But I can't get my arm down there to reach the bottom so I'm gonna install these screws in the top. So I marked it. Now I can try and get the drawer, uh, the front on with the door open, which should be quite a bit easier. You want to make sure when you screw this to your door, you're going into the frame and not the panel, especially if you have a thin quarter inch, like a shaker style. This thin part, it, the screw would come through. If you had to go into here for some reason on a particular cabinet, you probably could, because that's full three quarter inch material, but this is that presidential raised panel. You wanna be in there, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go about a quarter inch in. This is very delicate. You don't wanna screw this up. These doors are not cheap. That did the trick. All right, it took a little finagling but I was able to get it by using clamps and adjusting it and, you know, this way to where everything's right now. And that works good. So you got a trash can there. Sweet. Okay, next we're gonna do the Bloom Tandem drawer slides. These are full full length, soft closed drawer slides, and they make it pretty easy for you by drilling pilot holes where the back plate goes. So I'll demonstrate how to do these, and then we'll move on. 24 inch Bloom Tandem Blue Motion full length, soft closed drawer slides. These are probably the best drawer slides I've ever used. Got the clips that gives it the soft close and the adjustability and the ability to remove the drawer. Here's the drawer box. And this is the back. You can tell by the slots that are cut, that's for the runners. So that goes in that way. So we're gonna flip this over and install these the way they go. All right, you need four of these little half inch suckers. Take these with the orange part into the drawer with the little wheels. You've got um, a two screw hole mounting holes and uh, there's like a little 75 degree angle with a little bump out right there, so you want to screw in that way. Anyway, you put these holes flush up to the front of the drawer bottom, same on each side.
Okay, now we have to mount these rear sockets onto the back of the cabinet. Just pull them off. And uh, you want them where they pre-drill the holes for you, you want to put the screw in these uh, tall slots, right in the center. Now, if you don't have pre-drilled holes, you need to make sure that this bottom is at the exact same height as the face frame bottom of your drawer opening. And it has to be a half inch space between the socket and the side wall. So if you have to drill your own holes, that's all you need to do. Rear sockets are in. Right slide needs to go in to that socket. Slide it all the way back. All right, so now you've got the uh, the slide that you put onto the socket in the back, and you've got a lot of adjustment here. And you want to pull the front into the face frame, leaving a 5/32nd of an inch setback, and then you drive a screw in there. These are the two 5/8 wood screws they give you for this purpose. All the others are half inch. And this is my 532nd setback from the front of the face frame, which is very specific. I don't know what all that is. And I drilled a pilot hole. Okay, that's pretty much all you gotta do to do your drawer slides. Moment of truth. Orient your uh, release thingies to the front of the drawer. Set this in here. Slide it back and click those releases into this system like that. That is dead on. Full extension, soft close. Money. All right, so that we have the trash pull out, and we have a drawer. And then, like I said, if you want to remove a drawer, you you squeeze those orange parts, and you can just pull this up and out. Squeeze the orange parts, releases the drawer. To put it back, you just put it on there and push it all the way back. Click it, and it's good to go. Cool. Now let's do some doors. Next we'll do these doors. I'll show you how we put the hinges on and uh, align them and get all the reveals right. Here are my two doors for above the refrigerator cabinet. Um, when you're unpacking all of this, like I just, you probably saw me, I was measuring, comparing it to my list to try and figure out what door goes to what cabinet. One easy way to tell is that it's a door versus a drawer front is they pre-drill the cups for the hinges and they're usually three inches center to edge. So that's handy. I've got Forstner bits and all that that, you know, I'm, I'm used to drilling them, but I'm glad they pre-do it for you. And one of the way, like I said, the way to tell the difference between a door and a drawer front, this is a drawer front, has nothing drilled for a hinge. And then uh, some of the larger applied panels don't have the cups drilled, so you know that that's an applied panel, not an actual door. These are inch and a quarter overlay hinges. So you got four little screws and two big screws. This is simple. Just set these down in the cup, like so. I'm gonna use a square, a combination square, just because I'm anal, to make sure that's squared up. A little bit of a pilot hole. Small flathead screw. And that's that. I'll do the other one. 
I'm using a drywall T-square here that I just clamped onto the face frame and then used the level to make sure it was level. I'm using that as my uh, some jig, sort of, so we can set the door edge right there and kind of find where these hinges need to set. So I marked the center of the hinge right there and I'll do that with the other side. Then we'll drill pilot holes and then drive our screws in. All right, now these are to mount the hinges to the frame. You got these three quarter inch pan heads. So you only have to go in not very far. I usually do the top one first so you can free up your hands and do the bottom one. Perfect. All right, I got all of the doors with the exception of the appliance garage doors and the corner base cabinet installed. Little bumpers are put on. They all work really nice. They all lined up great. Uh, and I'm starting to do the drawer fronts. And I just wanted to show real quick how I do drawer fronts. There are a lot of ways to do these. Some people put double-sided sticky tape onto the front of the drawer box and then fasten the drawer front to it so that they can then screw into the drawer front from the back of the drawer. I don't really like that because it leaves a gap between the drawer box and the drawer front and it just doesn't really look as nice to me. All right, so here's how I do uh, drawer fronts on drawer boxes. Uh, I just use CA glue to glue the front to the box and then it holds really well until you go to put your hardware on your drawer pool. Uh, you don't need to screw in from the back and have exposed fasteners in there and go in at an angles. So it's just, you don't have to mess with that. Pull the drawer out so it's proud of the uh, face frame. So, because if it's inset too much, you're not gonna be able to touch it with the drawer front. So I just use a paint stick and put a little clamp on it, holds it out. You don't want it out farther than the door because you need to use this door as your reference guide. So uh, I'm using a couple pieces of half inch CDX, which is actually only 7 16 So I compensate for that extra with a couple playing cards. And we're trying to get a half inch reveal on the bottom and the top. And we want the sides lined up perfectly with the door. So here's my little spacer. Move it in from the side of the door so that you can sight down the side of the door. So we got that going on there. Hold that. All right. Now, drawer front. Just, um, I use the gel because it doesn't run everywhere and it, it works perfect for this. So, and I, I just put a little dot every inch around the perimeter of the inside panel. Uh, so on the frame part, and that way I know like it's gonna contact. It's 
going to get contact there. So dot, 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 dot. All right, now just sit down on top of your spacers. Line up the sides with the door and push forward. Keep your spacers going. They kind of tend to want to try to leave. <laughs> Uh, there we go. And you do have about, I don't know, a couple seconds of wiggle room here. And just press onto the drawer. And you want to hold this for 15 to 20 seconds. You can also get that spray accelerator that you put on the opposite surface and that works great for like three seconds for it to dry within three seconds. I don't have any of that. But that should definitely be on my list of stuff I need to get. So we got good contact. And I do this, like I said, because I don't like that gap between the drawer front and the door drawer box that happens when you use double-sided sticky tape. It leaves about a sixteenth of an inch of a gap and it just kind of looks unfinished to me. I don't like gaps. Drawers are done, doors are done. Man, that's a big door right there. Got these going. Nice doors. Really like these doors. Got a nice drawer going on here for pots and pans. Got the bumpers on the doors. So, they don't bang. Everything's done. Everything turned out really nice. I love it. And I don't think I care that we didn't end up glazing. It's just going to look good with the island. Got to do hardware, uh, drawer pulls, and cabinet pulls. And then, again, I can't mess with that until we get our countertop in. And I set that down on the countertop, bolt it in, finish up the trim, put the doors on, and we'll be good to go. So that's pretty much all I can do for this video of uh, finishing cabinets. And that's good because about an hour ago, I went and picked up our second order. So now I have to start building island cabinets, vanities, laundry cabinets, and all that. So, but appreciate you sticking around and watching. Uh, if you learned anything, cool. If not, sorry. But if you like this kind of stuff, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.